shining a light on the issue of domestic violence. The United Nations study out this week finds domestic violence is one of the most common killers of women around the world. Fears are growing at domestic violence shelters. Domestic violence experts in our top story. Well, a domestic violence situation quickly turned into an assault. The federal government calls it a pervasive problem that frequently goes undetected. We're talking about the courage that it takes to come forward as a victim. Hello, hello. It is episode eight of Community Voices, uh, where you get to hear from our friends and partners here in Central Oregon. We all get to learn a little something. Uh, if you are watching this on YouTube, I've got this fantastic background because today's episode is a special interview with our executive director, Cassie McQueen, and Dan McGarrigal, owner of Pine Mountain Sports in Bend. Uh, and we're doing this interview because Saving Grace was selected for 2020 as their community ambassador uh, recipient. So that's a big fundraiser. The goal is $100,000 that they're hoping to raise for Saving Grace this year. Uh, and the picture behind me, let me move out of the way. So that's our winner of the bike. We did a bike raffle that, that raised 10 of that $100,000. And that's our winner uh, with Cassie and a very cool bike uh, to hit the mountain with. So. Uh, without further ado, uh, Dan's in this interview, as well as Henry from Pine Mountain Sports, and they they just dive deep into what, why 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 do this? Why be start a community ambassador program? Um, why ask the community to give five hundred dollars or more to become a community ambassador? You can give any amount. Um, and actually, let me show you that real quick. So if you go to our website saving-grace.org/pine, you get here. Um, you can learn more, which takes you to their site, or you can give now. And that's any amount. It doesn't have to be $500. Um, and then once you arrive, you'll see how close to the goal we're getting. So we've got a, you know, a long way to go. Um, they'll talk about how in prior years, you know, pre-pandemic, how they raised money for nonprofits they partnered with. And uh, this year, um, you know, what the... Uh, yeah, how, how we're gonna how we're gonna hit that goal? How are we gonna hit that goal? It's a, it's a big question. So anyway, just go to our website slash Pine, um, click learn more if you want to hear. Just read a little bit about the history, but I think you'll really enjoy this interview. Um, so yeah, without further ado, here is Dan and Henry. I'm Cassie McQueen. I'm the executive director at Saving Grace. And today we're at Pine Mountain Sports talking with Dan and Henry about their community ambassador program and what they're doing to make Bend a better place. Dan, I would love to just hear how you got connected with Pine Mountain Sports and what the last 20 years have been yeah. like. Uh, they've been a, a rocket ship of a blur. Um, uh, originally, it was actually working at Hutch's Bicycles and they opened uh, Pine Mountain Sports in 2000. And then my wife, Michelle, and I bought it in 2003. and. Uh, We've been in this location since 2006, so this definitely feels like home for us. One thing that stood out to me about Pine Mountain Sports was your your commitment to give back to the community. Um, you've got this community ambassador program that supports nonprofits across Bend. Yep. When when did that start, and what was kind of your reason for having a community ambassador yeah, program? No, great questions. Um, we the program officially got kicked off in 2016. Was the first year that we that we uh, actually partnered with a nonprofit. But uh, I would say that the planning of it started in 2015. And uh, Henry and I really recognized that where Pine has always worked to be a resource to the community, we just, we realized that we weren't necessarily keeping up our philanthropic and as strong as we were our retail side of things. And so we looked at that and the programs that we had at the time and how do, could we mature those in, in a way that we felt would correspond with the growth that, that the community was seeing. And it simply didn't work. So we started thinking about, okay, what resources do we have? You know, how can we connect people with nonprofits that are doing a lot of work in Central Oregon that we wanted to be able to help with? And so uh, we came up with the idea that, you know, of all the things that we know, we know the outdoor community, we know a lot of small businesses, which we learned very quickly in working with nonprofits here in town, that those two groups were really groups that nonprofits seem to struggle with connecting with. Whereas for us, that's our community. So uh, it, it made a lot of sense, you know, and with the structure that we have in place, it simply took finding a nonprofit that we wanted to partner with and then dedicating a year to working with them and connecting members of our community with, with the efforts that that nonprofit was putting forth. 
So it actually, some way strange, some strange way, shape, or form, it actually seemed to all work. Um, and in that first year, we got a good response. We realized that we had a platform that was functional and actually had a reward at the end of it all. And so we've, we've told all of our donors, hey, thanks for helping out. And it's great that you're on this list, but we're going to call you every year until you tell us to take you off this list. And uh, we've watched that. We've watched the participants grow every year, and uh, we're really humbled, and we're slowly but surely getting closer and closer to our goal. So what has been some of what you've been most proud of helping others, you know, over the course of the program? I think the biggest thing is, is that we wanted to work with nonprofits, not only that, that don't necessarily tie in with Pine Mountain Sports, but also with nonprofits that really do help people in need. And it's hard to argue that, you know, hey, a new trail, yeah, that's great. And mentally, it provides some, some, some sort of a, well, what am I trying to say? Building a new trail really does help out with people and their mental health and getting outdoors. But to me, that seems like a step past the efforts that an organization like Saving Grace does. You know, you're really talking about folks who genuinely need help, who are in crisis. And if we can utilize our resources to help a nonprofit that helps people in those positions, well, that's what we're going to do. As we've gotten to know each other and, and talked, I know you had a number of nonprofits that you could pick from this year. And, and, and this year was particularly challenging because COVID-19 was here and there was so <laughs> yeah. much need. Um, so what kind of made you choose Saving Grace this, this year? Um, quite honestly, it was a couple different things, um, but uh, really to be candid, um, knowing that my mom was in a, in a violent relationship when I was a kid. You know. um, so it made, it made the victims of, of domestic violence have a face. And where that's a hard thing to work through, I think the, you get more people to get involved when you have transparency, when you have honesty. Um, then also, I, uh, Take your time. Thanks. Okay, here we go. Uh, I lost a friend of mine from high school this year. You know, you, you talk about issues, you talk about problems, and when things like this come up, it's very easy to read a pamphlet, to read a brochure, to go to a fundraiser. But when it is that person that you knew, that family that you knew, or that family that you were in, or that family that you are, that is affected by something as heavy as domestic violence, you know, and, and especially with COVID coming, and knowing that more and more people are gonna be spending more and more time at home, for the vast majority of us, that sounds great. I'm going to spend more time with my wife and my kids, and then we're going to do family stuff. And then for people that are in those situations where that response is very different, oh, dear Lord, I've got to spend more time at home. My kids have to spend more time at home. And when there's a dark cloud hanging over that, when there's general fear involved with that, it's a whole different ballgame. You know, so... You know, when we look at Pine Mountain Sports and our customers and our community, we are spoiled with riches. You know, are there, there are most likely people that come into our store that we don't know their story, what's going on at home. We don't know those things. But we can help share the message that there are people in Central Oregon that are right here that probably walk in our door every day that need help from an organization like yours. And so when time came around, um, you know, we had a lot going on, just trying to figure out how to run a small business during a pandemic. And where, you know, full disclosure, I didn't know if we had the bandwidth to be able to host our community ambassador program in the way that we were used to doing it. And it's not possible. We can't do it the way that we're, that we're used to doing it. But when I look one level below, that just sounds like a comfort factor. You know, so with some nudging along from Henry and saying, hey, this is the year to do it. This is even more the reason why you do it. Um, it just made sense. My name's Henry. Uh, I work here at Pine Mountain Sports. Dan and I have worked together for 10 years. Uh, I handle a lot of the public outreach and advertising and marketing 
uh, for the store this year uh, because things have been a little bit crazy. I have uh, uh, helped Dan sort of take over the reins of the Community Ambassador Program for 2020. It was certainly not an obvious choice early on. You know, I think back to, to March when we were talking about whether or not the store would even actually be able to stay open um, and whether our staff would actually be able to stay employed, myself included. Um, but I think that as the sort of the realities of COVID-19 and social distancing started to set in, you know, we found ourselves sitting at home in, in late March and April um, and feeling a little bit helpless. Um, and I think that myself included, it was really starting to recognize that even though our traditional um, you know, store being open, being able to interface with our customers, being able to do an in-person fundraiser like a taco feed or a bike race or the types of things that Pine Mountain Sports is used to doing to actually raise money and awareness for nonprofits like this, none of those things were happening. Um, but it did seem like we had an opportunity where there was a chance and we weren't certain, but we might actually have everyone's undivided attention because there wasn't a lot else going on. Uh, and then also that very real feeling that people were at home and feeling a little bit helpless uh, and wanting to help um, and wanting to do something and donating money to to an awesome nonprofit that that uh, we feel that we had uh, vetted and and just seemed to of the different nonprofits that we talked talked about raising money for this year it was a you know in March and April um, you know we were already big fans of Saving Grace but it just seemed to be the obvious choice for what was going on in our community, um, and it really resonated with people. And so as soon as we decided, yes, like we, we need to do this, like more so than ever, right? Like it went from, oh, this is, you know, not this year, got, this isn't gonna work, this is, this is, you know, this is maybe not, just not gonna happen to, oh, this has to happen, right? And this is the obvious choice, like we, we need to work and raise money for Saving Grace this year. And if it wasn't for Henry stepping up saying, let's go, we're in, I'm going to take this on. Um, I didn't. I don't know if we had the bandwidth to do it without everybody in the village hopping in, seeing what resources that we have and saying, well, I'll do this, I'll do this, I'll do this. So here's our little village working as hard as we can and then making the, and agreeing to take more on in order to help those in need here in Central Oregon. And to me, that just sounds like exactly who we are. The hard thing about domestic violence and intimate partner violence is it's so pervasive. It's so pervasive on a level where here in Central Oregon, in beautiful Bend, it's easy to not think about that it's happening, that it's one of your neighbors, that it's one of your coworkers, that it's somebody that you know. But we know statistically it's the case. Um, and I think, you know, for us, you know, it's interesting to hear you talk about your perspective. Um, through the pandemic and through how do we cont continue to support our community and support these people in need when we don't really know if we have enough. What is our community going to be able to give? What is our village going to be able to give? It was, you know, a different exercise for Saving Grace as we said, what is the need going to be? What are our staff able to give these survivors that are seeing so much? Um, how is this going to change and is our community going to be able to step up and help us? Because the fact of the matter is, despite the fact we've been doing it for a long time, it takes a village to support us too, whether it's donors or volunteers or even the people who, you know, stand up and say, hey, that's not okay. You, you can't say that. You can't treat somebody like that. Um, and so I think it's that, that village mindset, you know, um, that really kind of helps uh, ease everybody along. Um, you know, in thinking through COVID-19 and, and both the people who shop at Pine Mountain Sports, the people that you interact with, the people who you know, are having a hard time navigating this. How do I protect myself? How do I give back? You know, what do you kind of look through your lens as you're still trying to activate your village, you know, during this challenging time? Yeah, well, you know, it's funny. I was actually thinking about this uh, earlier over the weekend and uh, we did an interview with Ben Chamber uh, last year and they had asked us, they said, you know, what are the things that Pine Mountain Sports does? You know, we have this list and how many people do you think that you've affected in Central Oregon? And the first thing that came to my mind was, we have no idea and we'll never know. And that's the last, that is, that is the last thing that we're looking for out of our efforts. Just knowing that we're taking our resources and utilizing it to help others in our community. And, you know, I would think that the vast majority of the people that we're helping currently really don't walk through our doors. And that's totally fine. That has nothing to do with why we do what we do. 
We do what we do because one, we can, and because it's the right thing to do. And then also we want to set the example for other businesses and individuals to recognize that if you want a community to be great, and we have a great community, that it takes everyday people to recognize that they have the ability to do great things. You know, one of the things that I have in my life is good people doing great things. And it happens every day around us with everybody that we pass at the grocery store, or that some friends walking down the street or whatever it might be. You have no idea what they're going through. But also on the other side of the coin, you have no idea what they're doing to help. And there are giants that walk amongst us every day. And um, with those people, who, those good people who do great things, those are the folks that can make a difference in a community. And we're really lucky that Bend is still the size of a town, even though we continue to grow, that a small group or even an individual person can make a difference and improve, and improve people's lives here right at home. And to me, I just don't know how to live in a community where we're not encouraging people to do the same thing and that we're not setting an example. You know, and as long as, uh, as, long as I own Pine Mountain Sports, it's what we'll keep doing. Uh, we're really fortunate to get to do what we do where we do it, and I don't want to take it for granted. Yeah. yeah. An interesting piece about, about saving grace is this, this connection that we get to the community. We hear stories all of the time from people that you wouldn't expect that they're a survivor, that they know somebody else who was a survivor, um, that they've experienced this or they've seen this. Um, and, and to a point where I think a big thing that I realized coming here is Bend being a small community, um, there's still so much for us to talk about. Um, and I think, you know, like I was saying earlier, it's, it's easy to not see that it's here. But having that kind of that that transparency and that communication around it, that that this is happening, you know, and that it really takes all of us in beautiful Bend. We we we're all here for a reason, you know. How can we really really stand up um, and make this happen? And so, you know, in thinking through how people get connected to these causes, how they get connected to to Pine Mountain Sports, um, I think a really interesting thing is that you you keep your ambassadors year over year. So if somebody was really interested in learning more about the community ambassador program or how to even like connect with Pine um, and your endeavors, what what should they do? Uh, call the store, send me an email. Um, I'm simply dan at pinemountainsports.com. You can reach out to me anytime there. Um, you can even just drop a note here in the store. Say, hey, I'm interested in being an ambassador. Give us a phone number. That's a that's exactly where it all starts. So with our community ambassador program, uh, we our first year was 2016, and uh, we recognized that there was a lot of opportunity for us to engage more and more of our community to get them involved with supporting nonprofits that, that really help those here in need in Central Oregon. When we started the community ambassador program five years ago, it was actually kind of stemmed from the suggestion from one of the members of our staff. Um, at the time, we had a simple goal. You know, we realized that without a goal, you know, what really, what we're, what we're striving for. So it's very simple. Um, our goal is to work with a socially based nonprofit every year based out of Central Oregon that addresses food, shelter, education, access to health care. And ultimately what we're working to do is to get 200 individuals or small businesses here in Central Oregon to say, I'll consider pledging $500 a year every year to a nonprofit. Very simply put, if we can get 200 people on that list donating 500, 500 bucks every year, that gives us the ability to raise $100,000 a year every year for a nonprofit based here in Bend. Our goal is that by the time that we wind down this chapter in Pine Mountain Sports history, that we'll have that goal on an annual basis and that the Community Ambassador Program will help put a million dollars back into Central Oregon. That's our goal. Yep. So if you want to help, give us a call, dan at pinemountainsports.com. But, um, you know, we've just got it. We've got a great list going right now. We still have room for more people, but uh, we're getting there. And slowly but surely we will. Um, you know, it, it's pretty interesting. You had mentioned about, you know, you never know where people have been or who walks through your door. And I would tell you that this being our fifth year of the Community Ambassador Program, I've yet to have a year where we didn't know somebody who previously benefited from the nonprofit that we were working with that year, whether it's, you know, ch troubled youth down at Cascade Youth and Family, whether it's CASA supporting uh, court-appointed special advocates for kids in foster care. 
uh, even volunteers in Madison. You know, you don't know anybody's story until you actually dive in and, and, and find out. And uh, there are times when customers will come up to me and say, hey, thanks for supporting Cascade Youth and Family Services. I used to be a resident there. You know, and you realize, wow, this, it isn't that far away. You know, people that have benefited from these programs walk through our door, and people that may need these may need these programs may be walking through our door. But like I said, it's it's much larger than than our community, than the village that supports Pine Mountain Sports. It's really about our entire community and how we can help make Central Oregon a better place for everybody that lives here. Those are the things we can do. Yeah. You can provide safety, hope, and healing for survivors of intimate partner violence and sexual assault by becoming a Pine Mountain Sports Community Ambassador. Learn more or give now at saving-grace.org pine. Our $100,000 goal is great, but it's a goal that we can achieve together.